I'm Carrie. I started Lux Boudoir 14 years ago. Over the years, we've helped thousands of women feel empowered and discover their self-confidence with boudoir. Today, I'm going to show you how we help women see themselves in a different light. Hi, Patricia. Thanks for coming in today. Hi, Carrie. <laughs> so we'd love to get to know you a little bit better. So tell us a little bit about you, where you came from, how long have you lived in Canada, all of those things. My name is Patricia. I'm originally from Virginia in the Appalachian Mountains, um, a cute little area from a little valley. I ended up moving to the Midwest of the States for grad school and then made my way to Canada and I've lived here for about 10 years. I love having the mountains and the ocean and just love it here. Yeah, so nice. So nice. So tell me a little bit about um, doing something like boudoir shoot. Like it sounds like you came from a pretty, for lack of a better word, wholesome upbringing. What stopped you from like doing a boudoir shoot in the past? Or has there been like, you know, a catalyst of being like, yeah, this is the time I'm going to do it. So yeah, growing up it was, yeah, I never really showed my body a lot and whatever, coming from the South, you know, that was just something that we didn't do or talk about. We didn't talk about our bodies or sexuality. And so growing up, didn't think about it. And then as an adult, I love being outdoors and whatnot. So I feel like uh, my comfortable clothes are jeans and a t-shirt right. and, you know, being in like outdoor gear and whatnot, having the hair back and no makeup and so it was just not something I ever really thought about. Yeah, I never, I guess it, it took me a long time to feel comfortable in my own skin and to feel confident and you know, we all have things that we're self-conscious about and one of my things was um, I have a giant scar on my chest and growing up it was something that was pointed out like, oh, that's not really sexy. Should you wear that V-neck shirt because it shows your scar wow. and those types of things. So it, it took me a while to feel confident in my body and then being outdoors and doing all these things and reaching the top of mountains and whatnot made me love my body because it can do all these things. Even if there are parts of it that I might not love, I appreciate it. And I feel like with time, I've learn to love all parts of my body, even the things that are considered maybe flaws. And so having a boudoir shoot, I think will just bring it all together and just seeing my body in a different light and not just like the mechanics of it can get you to places, but it can also be visually beautiful as well and hoping to, you know, bring those two sides, the inside and the outside together. That's beautiful. That's, that's awesome. So talking about being healthy, so you mentioned that you have a scar on your chest. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I have had open heart surgery. Um, so when I was five years old, in the States you have to have, a, what is it called, a, like a doctor's check before you go to kindergarten, like a physical. And at the physical, they were like, oh, you have a heart condition, go to a cardiologist. Went to the cardiologist, they checked me out, and they said, okay, come back when you're 10. It should be nothing, but we'll double check. So when I was 10, my parents didn't take me back with this life got in the way. And then when I was 15, I wanted to play lacrosse for high school, but you had to have a physical. And my family, a doctor had never said anything and he was busy. So I went into like a walk-in clinic near my grandmother's house and the doctor had me doing the weirdest things like lay down on the bed and sit up and she would listen to me, sit down and stand up and she would listen to me. And it was very bizarre. And then she called my mom into the room and said, you need to go to a cardiologist. So I went to the cardiologist and then they said, oh my gosh, how is your heart beating right now? And you need surgery and we can't deal with you here. So we have to send you to uh, a different location because our we didn't have the services to take care of me. So I ended up going to University of Virginia and they checked me out. They were like, yeah, you definitely need surgery. And this was all in the beginning of April and the beginning of June, I had surgery. Um, I was 15 years old, so I'd just finished grade nine. And yeah, they did valve replacements and uh, the recovery was rough as you can imagine as a 15 year old wanting to be active with your friends and you couldn't do all of that. And then you had this scar down your chest and you're at that age where you're developing, you know, and figuring out who you are and, you know, as a teenager wanting to wear like low cut shirts and everything, but everyone's like, oh, you have a scar, you have a scar. And uh, 
yeah, I had to take care of it a lot and put the, you know, vitamin E oils on it so it wouldn't stay red and whatnot, but that's what it's from, but I wouldn't be alive without it, so. So how did that affect your, like, um, like your confidence? It definitely impacted my body image because I was a lanky teenager. I was the same height as I am now, so like 5'4", and I was quite thin because of my heart condition. My body wasn't absorbing nutrients, so I was sick quite often, and I was just like this scrawny teenager, and so I never felt beautiful. So how did you sort of come out the other side? Because you've clearly come out the other side of that, <laughs> right? Yeah. So how did, like, what, what was it, something happened in your life that made you realize that, like, you know, you're not broken and, like, this is just something that, you know, in order to improve your body, you needed to do this, but... I think it was a slow over time thing. <clears throat> um, when I left Virginia and I went to grad school in St. Louis in the Midwest, that was the first time I was able to get out of where I grew up and where kind of you felt like everyone knew you and everyone knew your story and even if they didn't i just felt like there was so much history there that I, my story was already written there so when i moved to st louis i was able to start being myself without all of these restrictions and i was like who am i and what do i like and i just really focused on myself then yeah, and then after that, moving even further west, and I realized that I missed the mountains of Virginia, and I started going hiking and feeling that connection to the earth and then seeing what my body could do and the movement and that it can get you from place A to B. And I was like, wow, like that's empowering that your body can do that. I must not be broken if I could do that. Like my body can do that. And then um, going through the emotional side of things because I felt like I started accepting the outside of my like or the mechanics of my body that it can do these things and it's beautiful because it can do these things and then accepting the outside of my body um, was a process as well and then uh, one time I was hiking on one of the local mountains and I don't know why I had a heart monitor on because the cardiologist had me have one on um, I was having some challenges and I got to the top of the mountain and having the heart monitor on really just reminded me of that inner brokenness again, but I didn't want to feel that because I knew that it was powerful. And so on top of the mountain, I took all of my clothes off and I just stood there naked on the mountain and just sat on the rock and started falling because I had gotten there and it was so beautiful outside and I felt so beautiful because I could be there and I wasn't broken anymore and I don't know why but being able to be on the mountain and see the world and how small I am and the world and being connected to nature without any labels on it was empowering and after that moment I just realized that I was enough and so now whenever I go hiking and I feel this connection to the earth I take all my clothes off on top of a mountain and I just sit with mother nature and realize that I'm part of that and she's so beautiful. Wow that's really beautiful mm -hmm. and I'm now crying. <laughs> <laughs> That's really amazing. Like that yeah, is such a beautiful story. I'd love to know more about your surgery. Yeah, so it's called bicuspid aortic valve insufficiency. The aortic valve goes to your aortic arch, which is what sends blood to your whole body to like your carotid arteries and such. So it's a really important valve to have. So instead of having three leaflets, my hand two, insufficiency just means it backflows. So there's basically a leak and that, so I wasn't getting the amount of blood I needed um, to my whole body. So they said, oh, we need to change that valve. So they took the pulmonary valve, which has the oxygenated blood from the lungs, and they put that in the aortic place, and then I have a donor valve. Organ donation's really important, I feel, because without it, I mm -hmm. wouldn't have the lifestyle that I have. I had the option of a donor valve or a man-made valve. 
human tissue, you know, works better in our own bodies. So that was the surgery that we chose. It was terrifying as a 15 year old to have heart surgery because you think of old people having heart problems. Yeah. And uh, so it was a big joke with my friends that I have an old lady name and an old lady heart. Yeah, I feel like media, you know, it changes when I was younger and the magazines were like, oh, you have to be thin, real thin. You have to, you know, wear crop tops and whatever and look this way. And then it got to where, oh, you're supposed to have a booty and you're supposed to be curvy and this and that. And it was always on those types of things, but it wasn't real life like, oh, it's okay to have a scar and to be beautiful. So I never saw myself in the media. It, it was all fake, you know, because you can't look like they show you. And so that was challenging to be like, you don't see anyone with a scar on there, so it must not be attractive or beautiful. And I think that we need to show more of those real things because it is empowering to go through something that saves your life and have a scar from it. And that's sexy and it's okay to have that. And But being a smaller person, everyone's like, oh, you're thin, that's okay. You must be so confident and you must feel sexy all the time because you're thin and you meet with, you meet the dimensions that society says you're supposed to, to be sexy. They just look at the outside and they're just like, oh, well, you're that, so you can't have any problems. You must not have any insecurities. And I feel like that's what society tells us and that's what media tells us, but that's not really true. Cause look at all the people that are models, you know, typically they're not really happy with who they are. And yeah, I hope that we start talking more about what's really in there and being healthy is sexy, not a certain size. That's so important. I mean, at Lex, we strive to really showcase all bodies and all sizes and and show that everyone's beautiful you know whether mm -hmm. you have you know scars or no scars or stretch marks or you know baggy skin from losing weight or whatever it is right so mm -hmm. it's really important i think that it's one of the reasons why we do what we do is to make women realize that they're beautiful no matter what they look like with your heart condition, you said you go to the, the doctor pretty regularly. Would you potentially have to have surgery again in your life or is it just something that, you know, like they've fixed it and they just kind of monitor you to make sure that you're, everything's good? Yeah, I will definitely have to have surgery again in the future. It's something that monitored. Actually, uh, I go for an MRI this coming week. Yeah, so I have an MRI every other year and the other year I have like a stress test where they put you on a bike mm. or a treadmill. I have a great team of doctors. I have two cardiologists here that I go see. Yeah, at some point I will have to have surgery again. And I think in the beginning it was hard for me to be like, oh, I have to have surgery, but when, but when, but when? And now I just have to let go and say, oh, it's gonna happen in the future and let's live for today. And that definitely took a while mm -hmm. to accept. But it's kind of nice in a way to be like, it's out of my control and live every day for what it is. And I also, I have someone else's tissue in my body beating in my heart. And so I want to live life for that person too. So I want to live for their life too and not be focused on the, when am I going to have surgery again? Is it going to stop my lifestyle as it is and just enjoy what I am able to do right now? So have you ever, um, short of this experience, um, have you ever thought about doing a boudoir shoot before? You know, after I got naked on top of the mountain, I did think about it. I was like, oh, but I don't know if I feel comfortable in four walls and a ceiling getting naked. <laughs> I feel uncomfortable outside where no one's here to judge me and you know, the judgment of myself is here and can blow away with the wind. So I thought about it, but I don't know that I had the confidence or I wasn't comfortable enough in my skin yet because I was just accepting myself in the outdoors. Right. So it was something that had been coming and then getting older, I have more friends that are doing boudoir and, you know, doing it before kids and after kids. So it was something I, I definitely started to think about and hearing their experiences with it and how positive it was. I was like, maybe that is something that I'd be interested in. And then this opportunity happened. I was like, well, that seems like a sign from the universe to, to be. try it out. Coming into this experience, do you have like, a hope for an outcome or a 
um, anything you're wanting to experience through doing a boudoir shoot. I mean, I'm excited that it's something that's completely out of my comfort zone um, in an indoor setting <laughs> and I've never had my hair and makeup done or anything like this and then talking about myself is a weird experience too, but I'm hoping out of this to kind of put more puzzle pieces together and help on that journey of realizing that, you know, I am beautiful in every setting and I'm curious to know what it will be like to see the pictures from it, to put that where my appreciation of how my body works and put that together with the outer part of my body and to see myself in a different light. Yeah, maybe it's how other people see me, but I've never seen myself that way. Have you had any experience of like feeling less desirable um, because of your scar, like with partners or anything like that? You were just saying you're, you know, obviously loving yourself is important, but have you felt that, you know, that's a hindered relationships or? My grandmother, as much as I love her, when I was in high school going to prom, I tried on a dress that had a really deep V and she said, oh, I don't think you should wear that because it has your scars displayed. And did you find that like having that, um, like your grandmother, who's somebody you look up to, say that to you, did that shape your, like, like shape you in terms of like, well, yeah, okay, yeah, like I look up to this person, so clearly the scar is a bad thing or I'm unattractive because of it. Yeah, it definitely impacted me and shaped me and I felt like it made me undesirable and it definitely shaped that idea of beauty and meeting the societal standards because that's what she had given into is the societal standards. And instead of looking at it, oh, that saved your life, like it's beautiful because now you're here because of that. It was, we well, need to hide that. Mm. It took a long time, yeah, to want to come out and, and show that side of me and be like, I'm okay with that, I'm proud of that. I mean, he, especially even what we do here, like we have on our, you probably saw our thing, it's like, what are your Photoshop expectations? Mm -hmm. And like, that's one of the things is like, you know, some people are like, yeah, I wanna hide all the things or I wanna show them all off, you know, because like with stretch marks or, you know, like mamas that have kids, they're like, yeah, that's part of who I am and how I, you know, like I was able to have children and I have stretch marks to prove it. And, you know, so it's, I think really important for people to understand that like either way is fine, whatever makes you the most comfortable, you know, and whatever you feel the best in your skin. Yes, and I would never want my scar hidden anymore because it's a part of that story, just like the people, the mamas that have the stretch marks yeah. and everything because it's, it's part of the story and our bodies are just the story of what's happened to us. Exactly. <clears throat> With us here too, like, we want our clients to do this for themselves first and foremost. And then if their partner is lucky enough to see the photos, <laughs> you know, but it's like, this is an experience for you. It's not just for, you know, somebody else. Mm -hmm. So you said you didn't wear a lot of makeup. So what is the reason behind that? Like, do you just, just not sure what to do or? A few yeah. different reasons. One is I think my skin would be angry <laughs> if I wore it every day. Yeah, I'm not really sure what to do. Yeah, I'm not comfortable putting it on myself. So it doesn't make me feel confident if you don't know what to do, but I feel comfortable without it. Have you ever had like your full makeup done before? No. Oh, wow. <laughs> I look like a glorified version of myself. I feel like I didn't know that I could look like a magazine. <laughs> It's beautiful. Yeah. It's very different than normal, but very, yeah. I still feel like me, yeah, because me is on the inside, but it's just, it's a different outside and it's beautiful and I feel like it highlights the parts of myself that I like um, in a different way and it makes me feel like beautiful in a way that I didn't know that I could feel beautiful. Where you look at other people and you're like, wow, she's stunning. Um, but I didn't know that I had features and uh, I don't, I'm speechless. Yeah, nice. Beautiful. Thanks, 
arms down yeah and then yeah just keep going and then turn a little bit towards me yeah nice and then turn forward again Play with your hair like you're doing. Yeah, that's nice. And then just turn towards me. Yep, yeah, nice. Perfect. again. Chin out a little bit more.
Okay, welcome back. Thanks for having me. Of course. So we're gonna look at your photos. There are so many amazing good ones. Like it, seriously, that was so hard. So what we're gonna do is look at a few um, at a time and kind of talk about how we're feeling about them. Okay. Okay. Photo number one. There you are. <laughs> wow, you're such a fabulous photographer. That's all the model. Um, wow. I didn't even rec recognize myself at first. Yeah. How do you feel? I feel like it's, it's beautiful. It looks like a magazine. Like if you're flipping through and, uh, and you see you something are. and be like, look at that person. Beautiful, looks like a cozy bed. <laughs> Yeah, you look fantastic. Okay, ready for another one? Okay. Okay. That's a beautiful shot. Thank you. And I can see myself in it, but then again, it's hard to believe that that's myself. Yeah. At the same time. Yeah. If uh, that makes sense at all. How does it feel looking at yourself like this? Shocking in a way, but also, like we talked about yesterday, having it all done, like, being a female and being strong, but also trying to be soft at the same time. Having sexuality, but still being empowering when being sexual. It, uh, it's kind of like all that together, because I know who that person is, but I've never seen her in that light. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody new coming to the table. Yeah. How does that make you feel? I've never seen myself this way. I've never seen myself as physically desirable. And I've seen it in other people and friends. And you know, when you look through a magazine, you're like, oh my gosh, my friend is so beautiful. And um, you see them doing those things, and, you know, you applaud them. And you just love seeing your friends that way, of course, and other people. And but seeing yourself this way is yeah, it's something new, and I don't know if I have a word for it. You look great, and I'm glad that you can see that that's you, but in a different light. Mm hmm Yeah. All right, next picture. That's really fun. I've seen some of your photos on your website that are similar to this, and I always thought it was so beautiful, like soft and sexy, and but the main focus is the person's face, but you can see there's you know, sexy back there. And that's, I found that empowering because you can be yourself and still be sexy. You don't have to cover up who you are. How do you, how does it feel to see yourself in like, like, you know, high heels and lingerie and in this sort of, you know, spotlight? It's something I never thought I would see. <laughs> it's definitely not something I ever thought I would see. I only wear high heels for weddings. So seeing myself wearing them with lingerie and, you know, makeup to highlight the parts of yourself, you know, I don't feel like it takes away from who you are or hides who you are, but definitely it's highlighting that. And to see myself in this light is kind of inspiring because it's a different level of myself. It's like pulling back a layer of onions. Mm -hmm. And then I knew I had all these other layers, but this is a layer that's very, very deep within me. You know, I'm 37 years old and never felt sexy or confident in sexuality and, you know, desiring myself. I feel like this encompasses that because I do look beautiful right there. And I think mm -hmm. if I was looking through a magazine, I don't even know if I would, obviously I know it's myself, but I think I'll flip through it and I don't know that I would see myself in it in a way, if that makes any sense, because mm -hmm. it's beautiful. So I feel like it's easiest for myself and probably a lot of women to let this side of ourselves be what falls to the wayside and that we forget about putting love into ourselves and like feeling that confidence, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the next one. So how does seeing a photo like this change how you, how you see yourself? I know we've talked a little bit about that, but is there like, you know, as you said, you're, you, you've never felt desired or desirable, right? Does something mm -hmm. like this make you feel different? 
It does, because that lady's hot. <laughs> <laughs> it is beautiful, and it's not about the acceptance of the other people, but it's about seeing myself and realizing what I look like. It looks like a magazine photo. <laughs> I know, every photo is so stunning. So, do you think that 15-year-old Patricia would ever thought that she could be in a magazine? No, absolutely not. She definitely didn't feel like she belonged in a magazine. She, yeah, she felt like kind of a wallflower of everything. And, and again, I've developed the inner self, but never really looked at the outer self and just, it's so beautiful because I love seeing my scar there, but I love how much it blends in, but I also love that I can see it because it, is who I am and I feel like it's such a big part of my identity mm -hmm. um, because I wouldn't be here without it and organ donation is the most beautiful gift anyone can give so I love having it but seeing it incorporated in such a beautiful natural way is uh, stunning it's, yeah, it just... It looks like a power pose. This is a power pose. And do you think mm -hmm. that um, from this that you're going to go into the world as a different person? I think so. Even talking to one of my best friends last night about this and how it was such a eye-opening experience of how as a woman, you know, you want to have all these things but something always falls to the wayside. And like we were saying that one of the things to fall to the wayside is the femininity. Yeah, I feel like I do have a feminine side in there somewhere and it's okay for her to come out because it doesn't depreciate all the other things that happened. And I think, I don't know where it came from, if it's just from other people or maybe it's something that I made up myself that if you're too feminine, then you can't get other things done. Because if you're too feminine, you're not strong. And if you're too feminine, you can't be good at your job and all these other things. So what about like this experience or like this, you know, having having these different pieces of lingerie and having the, the seeing yourself from different angles and realizing your beauty, like how has that changed you or how do you how are you gonna go out in the world differently? It definitely changed some of the conversations I had with people even just after the shoot um, about what boudoir is and that it's not a gift for someone else, that it's a gift for you and how empowering it is. And I had some friends message me and say, oh, well, maybe I should do it if you did it. If you felt comfortable doing it and this isn't something that you would do, Maybe I should do it. Like, you look like you were comfortable in the photo that I sent them. And I was like, yeah, definitely. So I think it gives that kind of side of like, I can do this. Even if I don't want to do my hair and makeup every day, I know that she's there. And just knowing that she's there is really nice. And knowing that if I need to glam up and look like I need to be in a magazine, I can do that. And it, take a ton of work to like build that confidence to be in a magazine feeling if that makes sense at all. So coming through this and having this experience, what would you say to 15 year old Patricia seeing a photo like this? Like this one's just absolutely stunning. I love this one and I have cleavage. <laughs> you do. <laughs> but tell See. 15 year old self, like, keep working on your insides, keep working on your emotions, keep working on that, because you're gonna get that. And once you get that, you get to see the outside beauty too. And it becomes like one whole picture. And this is what, she, this is who she is. And she's strong, which I feel like you can see here, confident on the inside and I feel like this photo is helping her realize that she's confident on the outside so I feel like I would tell 15 year old self like this is you keep going you got this 
every girl has got this, you know, every girl is this beautiful. So going through this experience, having the photo shoot and getting your hair and makeup done for the first time ever, how, how was that experience and how much, like what have you learned about yourself in this experience? The whole experience has been fantastic and I would do it over again and I would tell people to do it because it makes you see yourself from a different lens and a different perspective and definitely lifts your self-confidence and that inner strength just gets another little boost. Every day, you know, it's a new day and we have something that we're like, oh, you know, I don't like this about myself. I don't like that about myself. And we pick ourselves apart. And one of the best things I ever started doing after um, talking to a counselor for a while is I said, okay, when you walk down the street, if you think a negative thought about anything, a person, let's say, like, ooh, their shoes aren't nice, you have to say two things good about them in that moment. And I think we need to do that about ourselves more. 100%. And I think going through this process highlights things that I can like about myself, not just about the inside, but about the outside if I'm feeling like I don't have the self-confidence of, wow, my eyes are beautiful, or, you know, okay, I got, a, I got a booty, I got some curves in it, you know, I had, and just gets that little bit of self-confidence to help take it out into the world, because there's always things tearing us down, so we gotta build ourselves up, and it helps us build each other up, too. And I hope that through this experience, other people can see that someone who's super uncomfortable with this could do it, that they can do it too, and that it is more emotional than I thought it would be, for sure, in the best kind of way. And it definitely builds yourself up, and it's so great that it's by you, another woman, um, that's helping to build that up, and I think woman to woman, like encouraging each other is so powerful and we need more of that in the world instead of tearing each other down. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thank you.